Hey guys, Etan Sun here from Sun Bros, and today I'm hanging out with Greg Lee Gaming, and we're talking about a new top five video, and this is gonna be a six part top five series. We're gonna be covering all of the, we're gonna be covering the top five best passives, worst passives, top five best abilities, worst abilities, and top five best ults and worst ults. So today we're gonna be starting with the top five best passives in the game. And of course, as usual, we're gonna have honorable mentions. Um, and our first honorable mention is going to be Balmond. Greg, why don't you tell me why you like Balmond's passive? Well, it gives him just insane sustain in lane. I think it's good. You could like transfer it onto pretty much anyone and it'd still be useful. And uh, I mean, 4% after killing <clears throat> a minion. A minion wave's what, like 4 or 5? Yep. I mean, isn't yeah, so, th 3 at the beginning, but you're talking 12% health every time you Yeah, with a cannon minion, minion as well, it's 4. That's like I said, yeah, 12 to 16 percent. Mm hmm. It's pretty ridiculous. It's pretty insane, and 10 percent every time he kills a hero. I mean, what it does, it's one of the best things about his kit. When you guys, have you guys ever played with a good tank bombman? Um, this is what allows them to be a really successful tank bombman, is they are able to continually tank because they just keep getting health, especially if they're fighting in a lane while minions are dying around them, they just keep getting health back over and over and over again. Um, so, I mean, getting this much health back from killing minions and heroes, it, we think is pretty pretty real and pretty legit. So that's why Bauman is our first uh, an honorable mention on the top five passives in the game. Our second honorable mention for top five passives in the game is none other than Alucard. Not only does Alucard's passive give him the ability to teleport after each and every ability he casts, which, by the way, is ridiculous if you think about it, but it also adds damage to his attacks that you teleport on. So Alucard is our, you know, our second honorable mention. Greg, what do you think makes Alucard's passive so ridiculous? I think with Ada, it'd be even more trash than he is. That's, uh... I think that's what, that's what, pretty much what makes him broke. Like, with Ada, that he's just got... It's yeah. I mean that that makes him special for sure. And I, I, yeah. I personally, I've been able to. I've got it in one of my videos too. I think the Alucard highlight video and the Alucard gameplay video shows it. But I've been able to just use his passive to like teleport all the way from one end of the map to the other, following an ulting Yun Zhao. I think you've probably seen that before. It's it is. Of course, um, it's like a um, it's like an attack reset. It is. It's an attack reset, which makes it, it crazy. An attack, yeah. Yep. And I think what we don't, I think you know, obviously Alucard's a little bit broken right now because of a couple of reasons. Number one, Deadly Blade kind of stops his life steal. Number two, he yep. has no form of crowd control, and he ends up being too squishy in, in the current meta. But with you know, you put this passive on any other hero, any other fighter, and it's just like imagine this passive on Freya. You would be yeah. going bonkers. <laughs> Riley would be insane. Just teleports and slaps you. Yeah, I mean, it would be nutty. Uh, you d put this passive on Cho. You know, like, yeah. some, it would be it's so just, crazy. Uh, any, anyone? <laughs> put it on Tig. <laughs> I mean, right, it would just be, it'd be nutty. Yeah. Now, anyone, it's transferable. That's what makes a good passive amazing. If just, it's transferable to anyone. Right, just, that, well, there's a couple, you know, either it's either it's just incredible on that one hero, or if, if, if it was on anyone else, it'd be stupid. Now, obviously, Alucard has some issues right now being really useful in the meta, but the passive itself is top-notch. We love it. We think it's amazing. So that is our second honorable mention, and it's time to jump into the top five. And coming in at number five is none other than the newest mage, Aurora. Aurora's passive allows every fourth ability to freeze the target it hits along with all the surrounding targets that it does AoE damage to. Um, I mean, plain and simply, when you have a passive that potentially gives you the ability to freeze five enemy targets, awesome, right? Yeah, because it's not locked to like single target or one person or cap to anything. You know, it's, it's pretty broken. <clears throat> I mean, it's not one of those things. It's not one of those things against like Alucard. If you put this passive on anyone else, all of a sudden you've got a bad day for everyone who's in the way. Like, Tig, right? Yeah, you, know, you can put it on Tig. Put it on Tig. All of a sudden, he's all pulls you in and freezes you. Yeah? <laughs> Here's what I was thinking about it, which makes it really awesome. Is everyone hates getting stunned by your door, right? That lightning biatch. I mean, it sucks. Yeah. Now your door takes time to get to you, so you could actually flicker and tell and like do a little teleport away and get pretty far away from her. Uh, Eudora, or Eudora, um, Aurora, if she wants to, could insta-cast and freeze you. 
And yeah. she can also freeze <laughs> you and your two buddies next to you. Or she could do her ult and freeze a whole effing team. Like, her passive is like Eudora's, you know, stun on on steroids and crack yeah, exactly. and cocaine at the same time. It's like nutty. Imagine if Eudora came out with that passive and then her lightning bolt could stun. Like, yeah. you just give up the game. Right. Even, even if, like, she could do the same thing, if she could, with her abilities, every four abilities she could stun, she would just save up her first ability until she's around three or four people and just cast it. You know, it hits everyone in the line. Yeah. I mean, it would be, it would be stupid. But, okay, so Aurora is number five on the list of most powerful passes in the game or the best passes in the game. Next on our list at coming in at number four is the handsome little guy with one eye, Cyclops. Now, Greg, what is it that you love about Cyclops' passive so much? I love cooldown. I think cooldown's probably the best, you know, stat in the game. Uh, you can use it goes for everyone, and you know, forty percent on any character in the game is, is always good. And when you put characters naturally built in cooldown when you use spells, you know, it's it's, it's pretty stupid, bro. I mean, it does a lot of cooldown reduction for, I mean, for Cyclops, obviously, it's it's one of the biggest part of, of his kit. It's what makes Cyclops special. It's what makes him uh, be able to continually spam his abilities. But again, this is one of those that not only is great on Cyclops, but you take Cyclops' passive and put it on any other hero in the game, and it's OP on everyone. I mean, the ability to yeah. get cooldown reduction on all your skills every time you hit somebody with a skill is dumb. I mean, I'm, I just... Off the bat, I'm thinking of stuff like uh, Minotaur's ult. Minotaur ults, hits four people with it, and all of a sudden his ult's back up again. Because he hit, yeah. he hit four guys four times. 16 seconds, or you know, eight, eight, eight seconds. Four seconds is just no joke, is it? You know what I mean? It, it's not, it's not a joke. I mean, think about it on Aurora. Every four abilities freezes, right? Well, then you add cooldown reduction yeah. to it. It's just like, okay, that's a little bit, that's a little bit much, a little bit of OP there. Coming in at number three is one of my favorite passives in the game. Um, I think probably the most underrated passive in the game, and that is from our little milkshakes girl, Lolita. Lolita's passive is pretty simple. It makes virtually all five heroes on that team get like a 20% health boost. That's what it feels like anyways. I feel like I always yeah. have 20% extra health every time I'm near her, which is ridiculous. I mean, it's just it's just the world's most solid passive it affects everyone on the team it gives you all the shield and it's it's not like you have to do anything to get it it just builds up and all of a sudden you've got a shield you start the game with a shield it gives you an advantage in lane from the get-go and you no know, you're going into a team board with just that bit of extra health it's just whether you're playing you, there's no way to fault it Right. You know I mean? There's no way around it. There's no way to counter it. It's just there. It's in your face, and you can't do anything about it. They've and it drives you nuts. I mean, whether you're whether you're countering a Yi Sun Shin on the other team with Lolita, and every time freaking Yi Sun Shin ults, it does essentially hurts nobody, which is just yeah. too stupid. Or you're countering, you know, all kinds of people. Like if you if you're playing a Bruno and Bruno ults in the first like two hits of that soccer ball does no damage to anyone and then you're able to separate like literally he ulted and it affected nobody like it's a, it's such a great counter to so many good abilities in this game um, on top of being like whether you're playing in a two man or a five man the ability to lane with a Lolita is such a big advantage how more how yeah. much more likely are you to get fed as an ADC or an assassin or a, or a heavy damage fighter if you're landing with Lolita and you can literally take twice as many risks as you were able to take before because yeah, it, you can just trade very efficiently <clears throat> wait for the shield to pop you go in you trade you get it but yeah lolita freaking phenomenal shield helps everyone on the team and whether it's laning team fighting or really any situation at all lolita shield is super useful um so that is number three coming in at number two is the goddess of stealth herself natalia uh, natalia's passive is actually like a three-part uh, ability number one it helps her go invisible which is obviously the most uh, the, the most potent piece she goes invisible um, and okay so it's actually got a lot of parts when she goes in the bush she goes invisible she it gives her 15% extra damage when she attacks somebody from behind that's whether she's invisible or not it silences the target the first target she hits while she's coming out of invisibility uh, it gives her increased movement speed while she's invisible or in stealth mode. Um, I mean, it's just... The next base attack does extra damage, it silences. I mean, I mean it is... Patch, this is the best patch, uh, the passive in the game. Yeah, we'll starting next pass, as soon as tomorrow hits in the next patch, this is the best passive in the game. 
But, I mean, it just, it does everything for her. Without her ability to silence heroes, she's dead. Without her ability to go invisible, she's worthless. Now, on the flip side, you give Freya the ability to go invisible when she goes into a, a bush, and that first hit silences and does extra damage. Yeah. Freya's gonna oh, go her, 50 and 0 every her game. passive is like a whole other character. Like, it it's is. a whole character. I mean, like, you could split that up into four things. So you can split that up, oh, this character does extra backstab damage. Uh, one of the skills go invisible. One of the skills, you know, do a next uh, bonus damage on next attack. You could literally split that into another yeah. character, a whole passive. I mean, I mean, it really is. Her passive is Karina's first ability and then some. To, yeah. to, to an extent, and it's pretty ridiculous. So uh, Natalia comes in hot at number two on the most powerful our best passives in the game and coming in at number one should be no surprise to anyone especially cousin Eddie and Gregory who both hate this hero number one pass in the game right now until next patch is Moskov Moskov's passive <laughs> allows him to be the best farmer in the game um, now here's actually the funny part about it that people forget is you guys oh the pierce is insane Moskov's passive has a second part to it which reduces yeah. the cooldown of his yeah. two main abilities every time he does penetrate and hit a target behind um, which is just cheating um, that actually I would have I would have taken that away also in a nerf of Moskov if, if I was in charge of the Moskov nerf I would have taken away the cooldown reduction on the passive I would have had a I would have a progressive cap on how many people it could penetrate starting at one and ending at three or four tops um, and then I would have reduced the stun by 25%. But alas, Moskov's getting murdered, and he will no longer be an option to really be played next patch. But as of right now, when we're recording this video, Moskov's passive is far and away the best in the game. Uh, I know that you two hate it. What do you hate about it? Everything. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Enough said. I mean, really, whether you're farming, you know, early game and laning, or you're clearing the jungle, or you gank, or you are fighting in a team fight, it is the most useful passive in the game. You could literally, if you stun people together in a team fight, you could kill four to five people before they even wake up from the stun. Because yeah, the passive is so powerful. You have to be the one doing the stun. Yeah, Somebody else can, just... can be doing the, the CCing, you know, but he can just hit everybody, all of them. I mean, apart from his stun, his whole kit's actually underwhelming, really. If you think yes. about it, like it's a bit of an attack. I mean, the attack great. speed's pretty insane. His ult is, is really mediocre at best. It doesn't hit hard. Yeah. The buff it gives you is isn't great. I mean, at max you get 50 attack power. I mean, that's nothing. But um, the yeah. stun's pretty insane. But I mean, that's it. Like you get the good attack speed, you get a good decent stun. But like it's the passive. It's without the pierce, all that stuff. It'd be balanced. Yeah. Well, but they're gutting it to a point where he's not gonna. No, he's not gonna be viable. But. As of right now, Moskov is the number one passive in the game. And guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this with us. Continue to look out for the series because we're going to be covering the top five worst passives, the top five best abilities, top five worst abilities, top five best ults, and top five worst ults. We have the whole series coming to you guys, six videos on what we think the best and worst of every category is. Thanks for watching. As always, give us a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel, share the videos and comment below letting us know what you guys think the best passes in the game are and as always till next time